What is going on guys? It is Bucky and welcome to your fifth lesson in how to build a Java stock market analyzer program. And in the last tutorial, we converted that CSV file to an array. But sometimes we just want to visually see the array to confirm that we actually created it. So let's go ahead and make a little method. And this isn't going to be a method that we're going to be using in the actual final program. This is just a method to print out a multi-dimensional array to make sure we didn't mess it up anyways. If it prints out something weird then we know that we have to go back and correct it but I'm pretty much just going to be making a method to print out the array that we just made just so we can look at it visually and make sure we didn't mess up anything. So let's go ahead and a little comment above the uh, method that prints out items array because that array was named items not print our items array. Come on Haas, you can do better than that. So now let's go ahead and what do we want to do? Let's make this public void because it's not going to return anything. It's just going to print out a bunch of crap. Print public void print array because it prints an array and that way I know what it does. Get it? And now let's go ahead and in essence we're going to be building two for loops. One of the for loops is going to loop through the rows and one of them is going to loop through the columns. That way we loop through the entire entire multi-dimensional array. So we first need to build a for loop to loop through the rows. So I'm going to name my rows x, set it equal to 0, and put x is less than items, which is our array name, dot length. And this is a cool thing that you can do. You can put dot length at the end of any array to automatically get the length of that array. So that way it automatically knows when to stop. And of course we want to increment that by one each time so we get every row. So this pretty much loops through 20 times. So now let's just go ahead and have a little system out print f. Um, let's just give us a little prompt to put like percent %s space and x. So this is pretty much going to go through 0 through 19, which is 20 times. Just a, you know, just a nice little visual. Actually, I might want to add a minus sign right there too. So, you know, this is going to be a nice looking method right here. So now that we loop through the rows, we want to loop through the columns. Uh, in essence, we're looping through this right now, and now we want to loop through vertically. So now, let's just go ahead and do that for int y equals zero, y is columns by the way, in how much do we want to go? You can put seven or excuse me six in here, but let's go y is less than items of x dot length. And what this pretty much means is if I spell it right, well let me finish this. Y plus plus. This is pretty much gonna get the length of each row and it's going to loop through every element in that row. So first we loop through the rows and then we figure out how long that row is and loop through every element in that row. So this is, you know, this is a pretty awesome program right here. So now let's go ahead and print out the element we get. So system out print f and let's go ahead and how do we print out that element? Well, first we need to format it. And this is C style print f if you're uh, if you're curious from the C language I think this was a uh, first adopted items X Y and let's go ahead and put system out print line to print so and make sure that this is outside your for loop your column loop but inside your row loop so every anytime you get to the end of a row you're gonna print a new line and again what we need to do in our main method first we need to convert it to array we can't just call print array when we don't even have an array yet so we need to call convert to array and that changes your CSV file to array now you can put what was that method called print array there we go right there and now we can go ahead and print that array so if you run this bam look at this we get this entire array printed out for us 0 to 19 so 0 to 19 that's 20 rows and if you see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 what this pretty much did is made this 
well, look at this. 0, 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, and 19. And then it gave us 7 things to print out. And let me walk through my method again. Tell you guys why this did it. There we go. Print array. What this pretty much did is loop through all of your rows and automatically got that 20 using items.length. It knew, Java knows how long each array is using this length method that's built in. And then it said, all right, at the beginning of each row, print out that row number. So that's why it printed this 0, 1, 2, 3 at the beginning of each row. And after that, what we did is loop through the row itself, loop through one entire row, and set and pretty much printed out the column or that piece of data. So it pretty much printed out um, 0, 0, 0, 1. 0, 2, 0, 3, and then our next one it print out 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, and it did that for the entire array. So when we loop through the arrays, when we loop through the rows, it changed the value of x. When we loop through the columns, it changed the value of y. So that's why we were able to print out this entire array. And again, once it got to the end, right here, I just printed a new line, and that's why it moved to the new line down here. So just study this and pretty much if you just look at it for about five seconds without me talking, you can figure out that this is a cool way to print through or excuse me, to print a multi-dimensional array. And using this items.length and items of x.length, which pretty much means um, the row length and how many columns are in it, um, depending this pretty much lets you loop through any multi-dimensional array. So that's why I didn't use like 20 and 7 or 19 and 6, whatever it would be. So that's it for this tutorial. Um, actually, I'm going to be building one more method real quick. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's just go ahead and build one more method to return the array. So public string, this means it's going to return an array. And I'm just naming git array. And this is pretty much just going to say return items. So now whenever we call this method, we get the array of items. And this is just for return array items. This is just so we don't have, pretty much so we can pass this array into another method easily without having to pass this entire array right here. So I almost forgot to do that. But um, this pretty much gets the array pretty much returns items and whenever you're returning a string array this is what you put instead of like int or float or something like that so don't forget to add these two methods right here and in our next program um, I don't even know what we're gonna be doing probably analyzing this data in the array but trust me it's gonna be awesome and I know you guys are learning a ton already so uh, we're gonna be getting into the good stuff soon so for now, I just want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for supporting my channel. And uh, I'll see you next tutorial. Hope you guys are learning a little something. Oh, by the way, don't forget to subscribe. See ya.